What's up guys, CJ here and welcome back to another all new Star Wars video. This one with a potential answer to the massive mystery that's been gnawing at Star Wars fans for over a year now. The identity of Supreme Leader Snoke. Since The Force Awakens came out a little over a year ago, the massive holographic mentor to Kylo Ren and General Hux has been a total mystery. While we've actually seen him in the movie, some of his lines about witnessing the rise and fall of the Empire and his appearance led some fans to believe that he's not in fact an original character and might just be someone from previous films or maybe even the old EU. Well, a new theory holds that he's not from either the prequel trilogy, original trilogy, or the EU. Instead, the newest rumor is that Snoke's identity was revealed in new Star Wars books. According to the theory, Snoke is actually Gallius Rax, an Imperial Fleet Admiral who first appeared in the Aftermath series by Chuck Wendig, books set between Return of the Jedi and The Force Awakens. And you know, the more I read into this theory, the more I actually believe it to be true, so bear with me while I break down the theory. In the Aftermath series, Rax actually appears mostly in the second book, Aftermath Life Dead, and over the course of the first book, Rax's identity was actually unknown as he had hid behind the pseudonym Operator and was feeding the New Republic information about Imperial plans. At the same time, he was manipulating the remaining Imperial forces from behind the scenes with the help of his protege Admiral Ray Sloan, who quickly became the de facto leader of the Empire with Rax continuing to scheme. To this end, Rax began to reshape what was left of the Empire to fit his vision, planning a breeding program to replenish Imperial forces while also forming a Shadow Council to covertly guide the Empire with himself at its head. By the end of the second book, Aftermath Life Debt, Rax had taken control of the remaining Imperial forces publicly and forced his former protege Sloan out, though we won't know more about the characters until their story ends in Aftermath Empire's end this February. But there are already a few things revealed over the course of the first two books that strongly hint that Rax is in fact the supreme leader himself. Firstly, his attempts to reshape the Empire to build it better and stronger than before is very in line with the way Snoke overhauled the Empire into the First Order, also from behind the scenes. It's worth noting, too, that the First Order rose out of the ashes of the Empire's final defeat at the Battle of Jakku, which is set to be the primary backdrop for that third Aftermath novel. After the battle, the Empire signed the Galactic Concordance, which officially ended the war, and recognized the New Republic, agreeing to stay within limited systems and also demilitarize. Secondly, one of those specific plans he wanted to revolutionize the Empire with, I think, was already indirectly referenced in The Force Awakens, the breeding program. By the time of Episode 7, as part of the terms of the Galactic Concordance, the Empire could no longer recruit stormtroopers, which would effectively cripple their military. The First Order's solution to this recruitment problem? According to Finn in The Force Awakens, taking or even potentially kidnapping children at extremely young ages. But this plan doesn't really make much sense when you think about it. I mean, how would they identify these children at young enough ages that they don't even remember their families? One potential answer is a breeding program, in which any children born to citizens of Imperial-controlled worlds would be monitored from, or even potentially before birth, allowing the First Order to select only the healthiest future troops. That's pure speculation, but it seems to fill in a lot of blanks that haven't yet been filled in. Thirdly, you remember that Shadow Council that I mentioned Rax formed? Well, while you've never personally seen any of the members before, you definitely have seen a son of one of those Imperial officers if you've seen The Force Awakens. That officer is Commandant Brindall Hux, whose own son is the military leader of the First Order, General Armitage Hux, and it's very possible that if Rax continued pulling strings behind the scenes, his influence would have passed from father to son by the time episode 7 rolled around. Lastly, and most importantly, there's an even more overt connection that fulfills Rax's need for a link to the dark side, even offering an answer to Snoke's more pragmatic view of the Force and providing yet another connection to the Force Awakens. An orphan born on the planet of Jakku 16 years before the rise of the Empire, Rax spent the first 12 years of his life as a slave before escaping at the first chance on a ship that just happened to be owned by none other than the future Emperor himself, Sheev Palpatine. Palpatine quickly sensed the stowaway, and recognizing promise in the child, took him on as a sort of protege. It's likely that, over his time with Palpatine, while Rax may not have been Force-sensitive himself, or if he was, maybe just not powerful enough to be Sidious's primary apprentice, he would have gained a vast knowledge of the Force and of the dark side, which he could have one day passed on to an apprentice of his own. In my opinion, the evidence is pretty solid, and all signs seem to kind of point in this direction, but the main issue with the theory is that it runs counter to both Snoke's appearance in The Force Awakens and other reports about his actual height. In the movie, he appeared to be several stories tall, but that was more likely 
just an effect of the hologram that he was using. But even still, according to Neil Scanlon, the chief of Creature and Droid Effects on Episode 7, Snoke was still taller than average at about 7 feet tall and very, very thin. We don't know exactly how tall Rax is, so this might not be a deal breaker as far as this theory goes, but it seems like it would have been mentioned if he was that tall in the book. The leading theory for months has been that Snoke was actually Darth Pelagius the Wise, Darth Sidious' own master who had conquered death and was mentioned specifically in Episode 3. It's worth noting that would also fit Snoke's line about watching the Empire rising and falling, as Pelagius had been around since before the events of the Phantom Menace. And while that's still technically a possibility, the new evidence is definitely compelling in my humble opinion. So let me know in the comment section down below what you think of this new theory and who you think Snoke really is. Of course, as always, don't forget to smash that like if you like what you saw and subscribe for more great content every single day. Signing off, this is CJ, and I'll see you next time.